many years, so we have a very good professional bed that we can use. Now, uh, being a British barn owl, you can tell lots simply just by looking at a barn owl. So you can see the size, coloration, and the shape would change uh, the further out around the world you go. So they're more white in the UK. The dark sandy colour that you can see plaques of on its back, that gets more prominent towards South Africa. And as you go to Australia, the grey and the sandy coloration does come all the way around around the front and have lots of freckles as well. Now in the British species, the males are plain, the females will have the freckles on the front. They're found throughout the entire world, the only place they're not found is Antarctica. Now training a bird of prey is slightly different to training a parrot. They're used to hunting things in the wild, so they're predatory birds. So here at the shed, we make the owl hunt the glove for a specific area, so post for our next owl, as you'll see, but I'll talk about that in a minute. But for Abel, he knows that every time he lands on this floor, he gets the reward. That means that Abel has a 100% kill rate if he lands on my door. So while in the wild, his kill rate will probably be anywhere from 50 to 50, so about 50%. Every time he went out and did a hunt, he wouldn't necessarily always catch the thing he was hunting. Now the reason behind this is that every time Abel comes back, he gets the food, so this is the best place for him. So that he becomes territorial to this area, he knows that this is a good place to hunt because he's always going to get lots of food. So training a bird of prey is slightly different to a parrot. They get three chances to come down, so he will get three chances to come to me, and he gets different signals. So it's a small step is the first one, and I'll ask him to come nicely. Then I'll ask him to come here, please, and then I'll ask him to come here now. And there's are three ways he gets. So there's the first one, I'll ask him to come here for nicely. Then he gets to come here, please. I'll give him another step. And if he doesn't come on the third one, I'll raise my hand up and that's me telling him to come now. If he doesn't come on the three chances, we put them in because obviously he's not keen enough to fly. That's because out in the wild, but, uh, barn owls, like most birds of prey, wouldn't go hunting every single day. If they catch something big, then of course they're going to be able to survive on that for a couple of days. Barn owls are slightly small though, so their metabolism is higher in the cold. So of course they'll need to hunt more regularly. But well, here they get two sessions a day with us. So he gets a session in the morning, session in the afternoon, and then he gets his main feed. Now we'll adjust that accordingly in the day. So he's flew very nicely through. Oh, he just knows it's that, yeah? <laughs> yeah, it's been there the whole time. <laughs> wow, what is that? But oh, that's a nice shot on your camera. <laughs> so as you can see, they're able. His eyesight's not very good, he uses his ears to hunt with. Uh, but as you can see, he doesn't really know what's going on in front of his face, so that's why he can't obviously distinguish that I have this big thing on until he was really, really close. They use their ears to hunt with and they can pick up a mouse party from up to 10 feet away. Because where they would live, they would course around an area, so they'll split up into sections, that's what quartering means, and then they'll use their feet to pounce down and they will hover over a mouse, a shrew, or a bull. Once they hear it, they'll put their feet through and they'll use their talons to help them kill their prey. 